Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Adkem Farmer training. My name is Dale Smith, Product Development Agronomist for the Northwestern Region. And that includes the parishes of Hanover, St. James, and Trelawney. Today, we'll be looking at hot pepper production. Hot pepper production, the Adkem way, the best way. <laughs> All right, so here we go now. Charge on my screen. Hold on, Dale. Hold on. Dale, can you exit and come back? I'm not sure what's the problem on your end. I'm not no, I'm not. I can't escape. Um, exit the meeting and come back on. So stop share. Okay, good to go. All right, so welcome back everyone. As I was saying, my name is Dale Smith, Product Development Agronomist for the Northwestern Region. And this comprises parishes of Hanover, St. James, and Trelawney. Today we'll be looking at hot pepper production at Gameway. I'll just to give you a little background on why hot pepper is such an important vegetable. It's actually, as we know, it's very highly used on the local fresh market and the growth of the export and agro-industry has also caused this produce to be increased. And our two main varieties that we concentrate on in Jamaica here would be the West Indies Red and the Scotch Bonnet. So for those who enjoy festivities using curry goat, jerk pork, you name it, fish, you can appreciate the importance of having a good hot pepper program to support your festivities. So ACPL is the Caribbean chemicals. It provides a wide range of nutrients and pesticide solutions for all crops grown in Jamaica. And then well, that's a very broad statement, but we do try to cover the majority of crops grown here in Jamaica and offer such the wide solutions. Nutrients are provided in both foliar and soil applicable forms. And soil applicable, we have now granular and water soluble fertilizers. So we try to encompass farmers who are in traditional phase by applying granular fertilizers and also farmers who have now been using the drip or fertigation system. Our program targets specific crop stages to ensure that full development and production is optimized. And by that, I mean 
we try to target the nursery stage when the crop is developing, crop is in food production, and even have products that can help to resuscitate old fields. So that's what I mean by a specific target program. Now, before we even move on to how our products at Agkin Plant Limit can improve your hot pepper production, it is important for farmers, for you the farmers, to appreciate best practices. And these are practices that must be carried out in order for the program itself to be a success. So first, we always push the use of high quality planting material. That could be seeds or seedlings. And by high quality, I, 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 I'm not referring just to price, but the most expensive seeds are not necessarily seeds of the highest quality. But purchasing seeds from a reputable source, more time than one ensures that the seeds are, or seedlings are of a high quality because reputable sources, nurses would know the proper protocols to carry out when treating seeds and seedlings. So seeds have to be treated, coated and pre prevented, prevent any spread of bacteria, fungal transmission, and those seedlings would have been grown under good conditions to ensure that you, the farmer, when you're planting out, you have strong, high-quality seedlings. Proper site selection, also very important. It's important for you, the farmer, to understand the nature of the hot pepper plant and therefore select a location that will be ideal or optimal for the growth and development of the plant. So for example, it makes no sense. We try to put hot pepper in a low lying swamp area where we know the plant naturally won't thrive. It makes no sense for us to try to put hot pepper in a valley fully covered by overhanging trees and vegetation. It needs a lot of sunlight. So proper site selection also key. Proper crop care management. And this again is a very broad statement, but it takes into consideration your approach to pest and disease management, your approach to crop nutrition from the nursery to production. So by crop, so by crop care management, I mean all the care that encompasses from nursery to production. And last but definitely not least, proper harvesting and post-harvest practices. Um, you can shorten a significant shorten the life of your pepper plants by improperly harvesting the fruits. So knowing how to remove the mature fruits with stems from the pepper plant will enable the plants to continue having that high production for a longer period. Post harvesting in the way the, the fruits are removed from the field temporarily and taken to a temporary storage and then moved on to the final. So all these are best practices that have to come in play. Now to start off, ACPL's input would first address the nursery program. Now assuming that the seeds in the nursery were from a reputable source and the nursery is an up to standard nursery, it now makes the sole aim of our program is to produce high quality seedlings within the shortest time possible. Hands down, that's what we're aiming to do. Give you high quality seedlings with, and shorten the time for those seedlings to develop. So in doing so, 
we use products such as Bio 20, which you may be familiar with. It's a balanced NPK formula 2020, and it includes auxins, amino acids, micronutrients, and all this unique combination comes together to promote quick root mass, reduces stress, and it promotes quick and uniform plant development. So we can see how this product matches with our aim in the nursing program. Also include SoluGrow, which is a high phosphorus nutrient package. And we know that we want that quick root development, that thick root ball, with white, healthy developing roots. So we need a high phosphorus. So we include a high phosphorus nutrient package with the Bio20 to achieve this. And this also contributes to rapid root development and improves the plant vigor. Again, the aim of the nursery program is to produce high quality seedlings in the shortest time possible. Now a lot of farmers may not um, appreciate the time factor, but carrying out the seedlings or shortening that nursery stage can be very important in how quick or how quickly you can start production, how quickly you can move the plants from nursery to the field. So the aim is to shorten that period and put out high quality crops, plants. So now that we've had the nursery going and our ceilings are now strong, the root ball, we pull them out, we see that there's a big root ball here, roots are fully wrapped around the growing medium, white, healthy. It's now time for us to transplant. And this is a very tricky stage because at this stage, you can lose all the work that you had put in into the nursery stage. So the ACPL program is geared at reducing or minimizing that stressful period in which the plant or the seedling is transitioning from nursery to outfield. Because as we know, the outfield conditions are considerably much different to that of the nursery. We have now more sunlight, harsher temperatures, the soil, where the moisture levels may not be as consistent as they were in the nursery. Pests are now out and the ceilings are now exposed to all these new conditions in the environment. So we continue with using our solid grow to get those seedlings settled in. And now that we have that added stress now, we include green stem. And green stem is our go-to for stress release in terms of crop production. It's a biostimulant that increases the crop, productive, crop productivity as well as reduces those stressful periods. Stressful periods are meaning transplanting, as we just mentioned, plant disease conditions, poor nutrition, and water logging, and even under drought conditions. So these are periods when the plants come, the plant comes under natural stress, and green stem helps the plant to overcome that, and even might attack a virus. We continue that strong nutrition in the pepper plants from seedlings right up because we know that peppers are high producing and multiple producing. So the plant is always pulling on a nutrient reserve. So at, at no point in time do we want the plant to become hungry, so to speak. We always want to have a rich nutrient reserve so the plant is able to grow to its full potential and produce to its full potential. So the aim of this program is to always keep the nutrition level balanced and high. 
to give the plant all the nutrient that it requires. In the initial initiation stage, which I have marked here from week one to three, the seedlings have been transplanted. They're just coming into their own. They're overcoming that transplanting period and are now settling. They start to put out new leaves. We now start a full application of Neutral Express or 44127 Neutral Express, which has a transcritical delivery system, which is very rapidly absorbed in the plants. So we, we utilize this to improve the plant's vigor and development. Dale, I'm not hearing you. Friends, we are able to direct the plant and say, hey, we are heading for production. We are now going to start to produce flowers. That is what we are aiming for. So cytokine is the biostimulant that does exactly that. Increases fruit and flower set and it promotes enlargement of fruits once the fruits have developed. And we continue with our green seed because we know that stress continues once the seedlings have been laid out in the field. So that stressful period, the plants are still getting over transplanting. So we continue with the green stem. They keep the nutrition up. We can also, we also include in our program, we give farmers options. So we are, you are now seeing a lot of fertilizers. Doesn't mean that you are to apply all these fertilizers. We are giving options because as I mentioned in the intro, we have granular or the, a granular application and also a water soluble application for a fertigation system. So Traditional or 14, 28, 14, or 11, 22 great fertilizers can be applied to give the seedlings that initial development that is needed. We also have our new compound Elixir Zorka 1515 fertilizer, which can also be used as another option to give the plant a quick shot of nitrogen and phosphorus that is needed to help them with development. You may be looking and wondering why use a 1515, which is not as high in a phosphorus demand as fertilizers above. But as I said, it's an option to take. And they, one of the beauty with our Elixir Zorka is that this is a compound fertilizer, meaning all NPK are found in each grain or granule of that product. So it is very concentrated, so to speak, in terms of its physical attributes. So this product can also be used in this stage as well. And for our fertigation program, we have for farmers using a drip system or injector system, we have our Agasol Water Soluble 2020. Very good product as well to, for the initiation stage to get those roots going and to continue the development of the foliage. And you are seeing here where I have the rates. So for Agasol or Water Soluble Lime, we use 250 to 300 grams every thousand liters of water. So in that solution, we are not going for high concentration. We are going for a well-balanced solution and then we'll use the timing in terms of our frequency 
to monitor how that nutrient is delivered to the plants. So traditionally, the granulars can be applied broad by broadcasting or putting their circular bands around the seedlings while they're growing. And then the agosol will be delivered via the drip hose or drip tapes. We continue with our nutrition program. And there hasn't been much change in terms of the addition of nutrients in the granular form. Because once you've applied the fertilizer in the first one to three weeks, the aim is to, as I mentioned before, continue creating that rich nutrient reserve. So the seedlings at no time do we want the seedlings to register a stressful point when they say, oh, we have to search or there is a lack of. So this actually, this four to six week or five to six week, as we put it, would actually be a kind of like a side dressing so to speak. So we are boosting the plants now because they are now, they have now developed more leaves. The root system is much more developed and all the plants are on the path to start producing flowers and buds. So in that sense, we've changed the Agasol 2020 for the our fertigation farmers to a 1535 15, which is a very high phosphorus. We want to push that development of the roots. And we've included magnesium oxide because the plants now have started to photosynthesize much more. The, leaf have, the leaves have developed by the leaf span. So photosynthesis factory has in, increased tremendously. And again, this is just a continuation of what is so as not to confuse you. They are, these are options. We're not saying to use everything here. These are just giving you wider options. And the beauty of our program, our hot paper program, is that we include the foliar applications with the root applications. So here you still see me continuing with the Newton Express cytokine and green scene application to ensure that all those balanced nutrients are being sent to the plants. So at no time is the plant confused to say, what stage of development am I in? The plant is being directed, as I mentioned before, a specific and a target program. The plant is being directed and going for a particular reason to gear towards high production. Now one key element that has been included at this stage that many farmers tend to neglect is the need for boron. Now boron, as we know, is an element that is very immobile. So it may be present in the soil, but the plants may be unable to move it from the soil up to developing buds where it is needed. So we have a Omex Fuller Boron that recommend to start application at this stage so that the buds that are developing will be able to move from that bud stage to fruit. Because we want also, once a plant has entered into production, that, that carries over into multiple productions. As we mentioned, it's a multiple fruiting crop. So we're not aiming for a one shot high yield. We want that to continue the life of the crop. So it's a very important element to include at this stage, Warren. Early production. My early production, you might be wondering, what, what does it mean by early production? Remember, you know, the pepper plant enters the first stage of production. We're starting from seeding. Now, once, this, once the plant has started to produce flowers, 
and those flowers are turning into smartphones, the plant is in production. You may not be able to read, but the plant has now started to produce fruits. So that's what I mean by early production. And this stage is a one-time path that will enter this state because from here on, we'll have to maintain the plant in with different sized fruits. So from here on in production will continue and the plant will now be having the added stress of carrying mature fruits, mid-sized fruits, flowers, developing buds because at any one time in a late production a high producing plant we want to see all those three stages registered on the plant so in early production we continue again with the abodom 15.5 and you've noticed now i've switched to a high potassium fertilizer because we are now as i said enter in production I want those developing fruits to have all the nutrients they need to develop into large fruits. So both the granular application and water soluble applications have switched to a high potassium base. And again, in the agosol for the farmers with the fertigation system, it also includes magnesium oxide because we want to keep that photosynthesis factory going we want to keep those leaves working because they are the main source that pull light to get the fruits going so we at no time want to neglect that and we continue with our foliar applications note carefully that you see the foliar applications are continued right throughout the different stages so the both foliar, the foliar applications complement root applications. And the reason for this again is, is because of the nature of the hot pepper plant. Compared to a lot of other plants, this plant pulls so much on the nutrient reserve because of the multiple fruitings and the extent, the time period for which it, it is expected to produce. So all these attributes, all these draws on a lot of nutrients and we have to keep that nutrient level high. It's very key to keep that nutrient level high in pepper plants. Once the nutrient level has dropped, you will see it start to register on the plant. So you'll start to see leaves turn color, you'll start to see leaves get small, fruits get small. And the one thing with pepper, it tells no lie. So all the activity of the farmer is registered on the plant and the plants show that. So you can always visit a paper field and tell whether the farmer was neglecting or he was on, or he's on point. The papers tell the truth. Now that the plants are in production, meaning you are starting to reap, the fruits are of size now, it's getting some size. People just start to pull. It is now at this stage that a lot of farmers now say, Oh, pepper trees start to produce, man, and let it go. No, remember, multiple fruiting, repeat production. So you can't afford to say, Yes. We do everything, man. The, the trees are now producing. That's it. No, you have to continue. And that is why I have from week 13 onwards, just to show that once the plants are now producing, you need to continue that nutrient application to ensure that those mid sized and small fruits coming up have enough to develop into large fruits. And that is a trick on how to keep the yield up. So we're not just thinking about the amount of peppers. We're thinking also about the yield, the size of the fruits as well. So a key thing to, to bear in mind. And Calmax B, as I mentioned, size, Calmax B is one of those products that we have that is geared towards 
that take me up of the cell walls of your papers. We want papers that are firm, firm to the touch, thick cell walls, crisp. So this also ensures that they have a good skin texture, the color, bright color, and the post harvest storage is much better. So papers that are placed in the fine mesh bags, temporarily carried out from the field, you won't get them bruising or squeezed. And if you are in an area or region such as mine, where we are getting a lot of rain now, Calmax B is a product that can be started from an earlier stage because you can always start the Calmax B application once the fruits have developed from that first flower stage. Because we want to put in enough calcium to keep the cell walls thick again and to prevent any damage. So Calmax B is one of those products that farmers will benefit tremendously from using on their hot peppers to keep them firm and keep the skin texture good quality. Um, you may have noticed that also that I had not mentioned anything at all <laughs> in my presentation as far regarding pesticides. I deliberately did that because I wanted us to concentrate on the nutrient part of the program because it's of paramount importance that the nutrient delivery is on point and consistent. Do, <clears throat> sorry, those two factors are what ensures the yield and continued production over the life of the pepper plants. Aside from us having pesticide solution, it is very important that farmers, with farmers, follow through and be consistent with their nutrient applications. Now, to backtrack a bit in terms of our herbicides and our weed control, we have for general land clearing two broad spectrum herbicides that are our go to, or two classes rather. We have our parapet dichloride, which is a quick contact, which is our scorch and parapet. And these are broad spectrum, non selective, meaning once you spray it and something, it is going to kill it. So that's why we say for general land clearing. So we're trying to get the land quickly ready for the field preparation. So we use Parquat or Scorcher or Glyphos Max or, and Glyphos AG41 or Glyphosate formulation. So these are also non-selective, but they are systemic. So for farmers who may have more time in terms of land preparation, you may choose to go this route. Using uh, one of these products that will give you a slower kill. Um, a key thing of note in using any of our glyphos or our glyphos formulation is that the farmers need to realize that the pH of the water that they use for herbicide mixing, for pesticide mix and all, is very important that you understand the pH at which that particular pesticide works, and in this case, herbicide. So for Glyphos Max and Glyphos AG41, the pH is actually very low. pH is actually 3.5. And none of all water used here in Jamaica that I know of is that anyway close to 3.5. Majority of waters in my region, they are at seven and above. I've yet to, to test a water, straight water source that has been below seven. So always seven and above, which in itself renders the glyphos formulation is inactive. So you can see why I stress using a pH adjuster. You need to remember that very carefully because you don't want a situation where you've 
use the product and then you say the product is not good. It's not really product is not good. It's that the pH in which the product was mixed was way off. So you can't get that efficacy. Very key to remember that for glyphosate formulations. Carista is a glufosinate ammonium formulation. And we use this, we've positioned this herbicide to be used in the interrows. It is not, it is, it is also a broad spectrum herbicide. This is non-selective. It's non-selective, so it will damage your crops, but it is not as harsh as our scorcher or our parka super. So that's why I recommend it to be used through this because we've seen areas where farmers, skillful as they may be, use our scorch and park between the rows. What we are saying, a safer practice would be to use a herbicide that is not as lethal. So Carista GA is our go-to for that. Crawl penzine are pre-emergent herbicides. And it's always a good, Good, I, it's always a good move to treat the soil for pre-emergent weeds with this herbicide. So you have the, you have the time to clear the land, plow the land, make the rows. There's adequate moisture in the soil. You can go ahead and apply your prolar benzene over those over that prepared area. Once, once you are planting seedlings, remember you know, it's a pre-emergent. So if you're going to drop seed, which I don't think anybody does for hot pepper, not in this side of the world, you wouldn't use these products. Pre-emergent means they prevent the germination of seeds and the emergence of new growing weeds. So they are not friendly to seeds. So we're speaking about best practices. So we are speaking about transplanting of seedlings. So it's applicable in this sense. And to the right, to the right, we have the rates at which they are used. So for our scorch and glyphos, we have at 30 milliliters per gallon. So all the rates are low in a sense. Or carista 20 to 25. Very low rate for herbicide. But don't be fooled by the low concentration rate. The efficacy of the product is, is where it is at. And these are all very effective herbicides when used and mixed at recommended rate. We move on to know our pests because these are ever present. Once you, they are sometimes even present in the nurse stage, but we have more control over so in the nurse stage. So once we are not out in the outfield, they will be with us to the end of that crop. So for hot peppers, for hot peppers, usually when once we have transplanted the most of the damage is done by mole crickets, especially for farmers who have established their pepper fields in an old cane field or in an old pasture area where they had a lot of maple grass growing with that clumping root system. So these pests like to hide under those clumps of soil, so they are the main problems once we've transplanted. So for that, those more crickets, which we call cutters, some people might know them as cutters, same more crickets, grubs, ants, all those soil living pests, our go-to is diazinon. It's a very old chemistry, but don't be fooled, it's a very effective chemistry in controlling these pests. So diazinon can be applied by using a Spraying on, can be, as I said, because of its soil application, it can be sprayed directly on the soil around the seedlings. A lot of farmers didn't know that. I think they, 
the product would work only when they sprayed on the seedlings themselves, but it can be the soil immediately around the seedlings can be treated and create to create that barrier, circular barrier. So the pests, once they enter that barrier and crawl through that spray application will be controlled. Now, a best practice again for these spray applications that I'm mentioning would be the time of spray. And particularly for this pest, the more crickets or cutters who want to make applications as late as possible in the, in the evening. And by late as possible, I mean, dust up should catch it in the field coming out because it is at this time that these pests come out to feed. So if you're, if you, and, <clears throat> and because this is a contact, you don't want to put it on early in the day where the product dries. And then when the, the, the more credit comes through, it's not very effective. You want to put it on in the late evening. So there's still wetting, that wetting factor. So it's very effective once they come in contact they'll be killed. Caratrax is, a, is another for very effective and it's a very broad spectrum pesticide. If you look, you can realize that it can control from beetles to all the soft-bodied pests, aphids, thrips, mealybugs, and particularly in peppers, one of the pests that a lot of farmers have problems with present some of the of our region as well is gall mage. Very, very, very persistent pest and it causes a lot of fruit fall. So if you're having problems with this particular pest, gall mage, you're seeing a lot of fruit fall. Your nutrition is up. Plants are growing well, <clears throat> but you're still having that high fruit fall. Could be possibly a case of gall mage and carjack is a Quick, quick way of cleaning up the field and getting back your production up. And the rate is a very low rate. And that's one of the key features of our pesticides here at Akim. We not only try to give you a pesticide to just do the work, we take in consideration the application of that pesticide, the concentration rate. So you know, you the farmer, you are not able to get your bang for your money because look at this concentration rate. A half a teaspoon to one teaspoon, 2.5 to 5 milliliters to a gallon. So a small bottle can go a far away when used at recommended rate. Capri cure, Danitol, Nizaron, these are also other pesticides that we have to control the pest during the life of the crop. White flies, aphids, these are definitely going to be in the pepper fields and we want to control them from early because a lot of them are actually vectors. White flies, aphids, they can be vectors of more significant problems, particularly when it comes to spread of certain diseases. So in order for us to have full control, good crop care management, we have to keep these pests that day. And the aim, the aim I should point out, aim is not to see any living creature in the field. The aim is just to reduce the pest pressure so that the pests don't start to affect your crop yield or your production. So we don't want to drop a bomb in the field and become our own chemistry where we're mixing up 10, six different products in order to try to kill everything that moves in the field. No, that should never be the aim in this hot pepper production or in any form of crop production. Always want to be mindful of proper IPM practices. Cure is our go-to, our number one go-to for mites. And we include that package or that application with Nisoron. So the cure 
is an abamectin that is able to kill the adult mites, whereas the nizaron is able to control the eggs and the developing mites. So we have a comprehensive mite control when we speak about mites and when we speak about cure and nizaron. So I'll try to give you that overall coverage because a lot of times, especially when it comes to mites, one of the major complaints is that last week we sprayed them and we still I see them spray. So farmers are spraying multiple times, two times, sometimes in one week to try to control the mite. But it's not that the product wasn't working enough. The adults may have been killed, but the eggs and developing pests are there coming because they're not effectively controlled. So you have that recurrence. So you just find yourself in a loop spraying, the pests hatch up spraying, the pests hatch up spraying, and it's a never ending loop. So understanding the life cycle of the pests is also a way that we concentrate on specific crop care. We know that this product is able to control the eggs, and we, the, which is the nizaron, and we know that the cure will kill the adults. Combine them together, get a comprehensive control. Smart move. Dinitol is also a very wide broad from pesticide and controls a lot of those pests that sometimes are outside the realm of other products. Um, and it also gives you that ability to rotate your chemistries so that we prevent any pesticide tolerance or buildup resistance to anything. So all these products give you that ability to rotate the products, rotate the chemistries, the active ingredient to continue that effective control. And we continue with the pests because in the past, we have realized that the farmer was concentrating all his effort on the active ingredient, so to speak, in the pesticide. What studies have shown where the active ingredient may actually not be able to fully work to its advantage because of environmental factors, surface tension on the leaves, whatever it may be. So by using certain adjuvants, certain products that help to improve how the active ingredient work, we have realized that again, you the farmer can get bang for your buck because if we can improve how these chemistries work and make them more effective then it would mean that you spray less times using which would be using less pesticides good for the environment and also very good for your pocket so by using these products we can save and this is one way also in which farmers need to realize how you not only save on your production in terms of investment by the dollar value straight out of your pocket, but by also doing things, adding, adding products or changing your practice can also impact on how much you spend in terms of Crop production. So exit, no film P are two adjuvants that are used to improve how our pesticides work. Exit actually pulls the product inside the plant to so create a translaminar pull, pulls it across. So, so for example, if we're treating for mites, it would be a good product to include in your cure and nizaron application to get rid of those pesky mites. Neofim P 
is an advanced spreader sticker. They even know like called spreader sticker is much more than that. It has UV blocking properties because we know that in this side of the world, the, the sun is much, much, much more pronounced. It's way hotter than in the northern side. So new film P and the sun, the, the, the UV rays actually cause the active ingredient to degrade that much faster. So a lot of times farmers may apply the product and then the control period is very short based on the time of year, especially in the summer where the time is so hot. So new film piece of product is able to lock that active ingredient in on the leaf surface and protect it with its UV blocking properties. So you can actually get a longer control. Win-win again. There again, just by adding this product, you can save by using less and making less applications of an active ingredient. Definite, definitely a product for control of trips and might. And again, we're just giving you more ease and the ability to rotate between chemistries. We always want to keep that rotation between chemistries going because these pests are very resilient. And we've realized that, again, this in terms of our, how specific our crop care program is, we've realized that we have to pay a lot of attention to how safe we can use these pesticides and produce foods, in this case, the peppers that are safe for consumption. So reefers is one of those chemistries that is much softer and for, for, pepper, for pepper growers now who are, we are in the peak of production and we're picking every week and we're picking every, we need a product that can be safely applied, but then gives you that protection of not carrying over with any harsh residual levels to the consumer. And again, on the right, we have the application the concentration rates and for all mentioned for set for the reefers there are half a teaspoon to a teaspoon 2.5 to 5 milliliters very low doses reefers being a potassium oleate like a safer oil it has a higher rate but this is very effective in controlling soft body insects so again aphids or grips or scales, those insects can be effectively controlled while the crop seeding production goes in reefers. Moving on. Disease control for hot peppers, the most common the attack from fungal problems. So to answer this, we have a wide range of fungicides. Carbenazine, Acrobat. And a key note for these fungicides is that they are not only effective in a foliar or topical application, they also have soil activity. So when we speak about damping off in the nursery stage, Carbenazine, Acrobat, even Topsin, do not senior. These are applicable because they have soil working as well. When you speak about our root fight of our problems, but again, because they are soil acting, they are very effective. And peppers come on a lot of problems. Fungal leaf spot, as I mentioned before, early blight, which occurs late in the stage of the plant, don't know why they did that, um, late blight, which is early. So we have covered the fungal problems in our chemistries. Down the middle is also a problem in our peppers, particularly in areas that get in that on and off rainfall. So you get, you got rain two days, then the sun came out again, bright rainfall in the evening, that on and off 
creates a, hum a high humidity. So you get that steaming effect, and that's when down the mildew starts really to show itself. So once you're in those conditions, you might want to be aware that down the mildew. Bellis, a very, very good product that we have. Very effective for early bite as well, and anthracnose, and general fungal leaf spots as well. These products, again, offer you options with regards to the problem that you may face. So if you know that you're going to be, you're in an area with a higher set of rainfall, you might want to know the problems or disease that come with that rainfall. You would select your fungicides based on that prior knowledge. Solcox, a very, very effective common base formulation. And it is also very good at controlling bacterial leaf spot, which is also another major problem in or paper production here in Jamaica. But as I admit, I'd had, as I had started out saying, best practices would include proper seed selection, good nursing management, and one of the ways to prevent bacterial leaf spot is actually using seeds from a reputable source, germ-free seeds. So Solcox is copper base, and we know for most copper base products, the timing of application is very important because we know the effects that copper has sometimes on production, fruits, and flowers. So be mindful of the application of Solcox. It's very, very effective though. Mancozeb, also another old chemistry, but very effective in preventing disease. So this is one of those products that we use in a preventative program. A lot of persons utilize Mancozeb, but use it in the wrong way. Try to use it as a curative. No, it's actually a preventative measure. So this is a, this is what this is a product that you use in the initial stage when we see healthy leaves, plant is healthy. We are seeing no sign of disease. That is when we want to use this product to prevent onset. We don't want to see any diseases, so we use this product, Mancozeb. And as I said, it's an old chemistry, but it is a very, very effective chemistry. I can stress the very, very effective chemistry in preventing fungal problems. And again, to increase the control or life of these chemistries, we would include them with our new film P. That protective property that I mentioned about is able to know lock the active ingredient and create that protective coat. The, the product itself can create the protective coating over the leaves that will prevent fungal spores from attaching themselves. So when used in conjunction with like a mancozeb, that's definitely a win-win situation. So no film P definitely recommended to be used with our fungicides. So here I have actually some slides showing a particular farm and this is a farm in St. James. And we started this program, this is our hotel program. And to be fair, this, this program was mainly our folder application. So we had no fertilizers running through the drip line. It was mainly our foliar programs used with the farmers. Soil application. So here we have the peppers at two weeks, just coming out of that transplant and say it's in the initiation stage. So we are seeing where these leaves, new leaves are developing. They're getting much larger. The plant is now fully acclimatized to the new field conditions. You can also see that the, the transplanting was close because the field, you're still, you still seeing all the rows well-defined, no weeds. So this is, in, in a case like this, this is, will be very good for 
prowl or benzene application prior to the planting of the seedling. So that's what I was, that's what I meant when I mentioned pre-emergent herbicides, prowl and benzene being applied to the soil itself to prevent the germination of any new weeds. So the program peppers, hot peppers, two weeks. And here we have them continuing, follow with me, 10 days after. So we are now seeing that those leaves now have now moved. Another natural two up. The leaf span itself is much wider. We're seeing green color in the leaves. And here in the center, we have more developing leaves. The plant has started to take shape. And we remember we are geared on directing the plant. That is the focus of the program to direct the plant. We don't want plants just to be growing, growing as a thing. The aim is to tell the plant, hey, we are preparing you for production. So now we want you to put on new leaves. We want to concentrate on developing your roots. And that is what the program is all about. Five weeks into development, here, the rows, and on the right have a magnified version. You can see again, the leaves continue to get much wider. Continue to see that highly sought after green, deep green that we want to see in our papers. And you can see as I look up the rows, the number of leaves have increased. By a lot. See, we here we also have a plant. You can actually see one, two, three, four different stem levels going up. Very good. Looking good at this stage. Just 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 five weeks in now. We can see, we can see where we are heading. We can see the plant taking shape. And know where we are heading. And all of this is based on the direction that we are guiding the plant based on the nutrient delivery and nutrient application. Just a week after, now we still have that, not much change between five and six, but we can see it in terms of leaf span, but we can see it in height. They have definitely grown much taller and we continue to see the development of new leaves. So we know that we're on the money in terms of plant development. Because once we're getting the height, that balance between height and leaf span, we know that we're in the book for money down at the roots. The roots are working. Here now, the plant has moved in a different stage. We now are seeing buds. So that's what I meant by early production. So when you hear me mention early production, this is what I was talking about. These plants, have started to produce. You are not able to reap any peppers yet, but they are producing because these are potential fruits. So these plants have entered into production. And that's what I meant by early production. So we know shifting gears, we're still trying to foster that development, but we now have to take into consideration these buds, potential fruits. So they, they are our concern now, they are, they are our focus now. Because remember, we don't eat pepper leaves, you know. These leaves are here as the photosynthesis factory. And that is why I, I, I mentioned the magnesium oxide in the agasol to keep that photosynthesis going. So the plants can pull, and when we make those full, when we make those full applications, the plants can fully utilize, pull them in, and send the nutrients to these developing fruits. 10 weeks and we're definitely in business. See that thick foliage? Definitely need all those leaves to work. All the leaves are working for us. To pull in all that light, to pull in the food from our foliar package as well. And we're definitely in the morning. Can see along the roads now, time has definitely lost because we're seeing weeds. We're seeing the emergent of weeds now. That aside though, they are looking, they're not looking bad. 
And here now, when we mention the 12 weeks, the plants would just start to produce. You're picking a few peppers now. So a few peppers now, you can go on one and few trees and see some mature peppers that can be picked. So we want to see at any one time, mature peppers, developing peppers, small peppers, blossoms and flowers. So you see how much load one pepper plant has to carry. So that is why I mentioned at no point in time do we want the nutrient reserve to drop because that will be registered in the plant. And instead of having mature fruits down at this stage, we can have some little fluxy bubbles coming up. And then once we have fluxy bubbles, we can't go again and say, I dump in a truckload of nutrients now to change it. No, that has been registered in the plant and that yield will drop over that particular time. And we don't want that. So we want to maintain that high yield so we continue to keep the nutrient reserve very high in the pepper plants. As you can see, in a, for peppers at an early stage, these are young, young, young plants, it, this production is high and is very promising. That was just to give you a, a visual of what I mean, what I mean when I mentioned keeping the nutrient reserves high and be consistent with their applications. Um, hope you all have been listening carefully because we've reached a point now where I have at least one question if we're listening. Dale, before you ask the question. Mm -hmm. There are two questions in the group. How effective is Dazenon if applied through the drip line? And somebody said, please touch on the control of Phytopsoma. Okay. The Dazenon the, the, does through the drip line is possible, but again, it is an EC formulation. So with respect to your longevity of your drip lines, you may not want to run an EC formulation so much so because it kind of has an oil base. And once that gets in the line, then other particles maybe in terms of your fertilizer may start to adhere to the inside of your drip lines and then block your emitters. But in terms of how effective, once it is delivered and it is still in solution, means there's still enough moisture, it is going to be effective. But the trick or one of the key things with the application of Dazinon at the sealing seed is to create a protective band. So you do, whereas the drip will drop it exactly at the root or the developing stalk of the seedlings, you want the, the protective band to be much wider. So the pests won't come close to the seedling, developing seedling. So, the trick is to create that band and not so much to just deliver the pesticide at the root zone. You want to create a protective barrier around. Regards to the, the, the fight of turnout, we know that this particular disease or problem is associated with a certain environment, moisture. So if you are in peppers and at no point in time do peppers like to have water retained in at their root system for a very long period. And they don't like overhead water and they don't like water at the foot for too long. So in essence, I'm saying peppers grow well in a loam, well-drained soil, well-drained soil. So if you're in a condition where the soil is not well drained or even if it is well drained but the rainfall is so high that we have a lot of water logging or slow draining of the water you might come on the fight of our problems now this is where our chemistries are key our acrobat which is as i mentioned soil activity has soil activity carbenazine soil activity, top scene, soil activity. So Acrobat can be used to drench those root zones. And again, 
don't not a folder application, new film P, new film P can be added to that drench to keep the acrobat locked in the immediate root zone. So when you make the soil application, make that soil drench with acrobat around the seeds, you have the active ingredients being held in those soil particles by the new film P locked in to help to fight the fungus at the root zone. Having said that, fight after a root fight after when in an advanced stage is going to be very difficult, even with top chemistries. So the best practice is to include an IPM approach where you control the cultural factors, drainage and everything, and then also include it with this pesticide application for, it to, for you to get a comprehensive approach and control. Hope that answers it. Another question, Dale. How long should a good hot pepper crop last and how much pounds or many pounds per plant is a good return? <laughs> oh, I was wondering when this, I was wondering when this was going to come up. Good is, good is so relative because I mean, again, it is dependent on the crop management and crop care of the farmer. It's also dependent on the spacing use. I mean, farmers who plant that high density thing where they have two plants on one row staggered, maybe uh, 18, 18 inches apart, will have a shorter lifespan as opposed to a farmer judging apart in peppers three by four on paper. Yeah, but um trying to put me in a box and from me trying to answer. I'd say if you have a pepper field running your high productivity nine months going, you're you're in for it. Yeah. Nine months going high production from from that's 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 good. That's good. Because the key is not just to keep the trees for long enough. You may mention high production. So you want to keep that productivity high. Not just having a pepper tree for, oh, I have a pepper, you know, pepper, one pepper grown or pepper field. One year and a half, year and a half now. And when you go look at the field, it mostly leaves and twigs. We, 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 that is not the aim. The aim is to keep high productivity. So if you eight to nine months you have high productivity, you're good. In terms of the yield, wow. From a pepper plant, it's been very difficult for me to say. I really don't have that, that figure in terms of overall from a plant, but I mean, you know, a plant that is producing in high production at any one time and reaping from the plant, you should be reaping if they are large, well, heavy paper, nearly you're reaping nearly two pounds of peppers from a single reap from a plant when they're showering. Guys, remember we mentioned using the Calmax B, you know, which is thickening of the cell walls. So those papers are going to be heavy. And you might say, two pounds of those papers are going to be heavy. So that is why we put the Calmax B at that time to thicken up the cell walls to make the papers heavy. And, I, and again, I'm stressing yield because the aim is not to just have the crops going for long, but to have that high yield high production. So in terms of volume, in terms of amount and weight, heavy peppers, large peppers. Well, so Dale, what we can do is to do a cost benefit analysis and share it afterwards. So it's time for my question now. Any more questions? All right, for those who are listening, I have two questions, no, let me choose one. Name the product, 
use in the transplanting of seedlings that helps to reduce the field stress. In the product used in the transplanting of seedlings, or at the transplant stage, that helps to reduce field stress. Oh, hands up. <laughs> green stem. <laughs> oh, what's that? Yes, green stem. Yes, green, green stem. Yes, green stem is calling. There was also the answer in the chat too from Greg. Greg. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to ask you. Yes, Georgia. Go ahead. Then, no, yes. hold on. Green steam. Not by he said buy a 20, but I said yes. no. Green steam. Oh, green steam. Yeah, yeah. In the transplant, not in nursery stage, no. in the transplant, with buy a 20 in the okay. nursery stage, but in the transplant that I had mentioned in this presentation would be green steam. All right. Yeah, no, no. yeah in this presentation. Um, Dale, who was the person who answered the question verbally? Yeah, what was it? Carla, Carla, or something like that was it there? Carla, I'm gonna ask Carla to yeah. send her information and also Greg in the. Are you sure it was Carla? Me. No, I'm not, not sure. sure. That's what I'm asking. It, it was me, Stacey, and I knew it. <laughs> okay, Stacey, and my bad. <laughs> Stacey, and can you send Georgia or your information? And I'm going to also ask Greg to send the information to me. Your cell number, so I can contact you afterwards. Okay, I can. Okay. Right. There's a question in the chat. Mm. In Barbados, my peppers produced very slowly during the hot summer months, but as the temperature fell approaching, approach, as, the, as the temperature fall approaching Christmas, the production drastically increased. Is there a way to achieve high yields during the hotter months? Or does that come down totally to seed selection? No, that doesn't seem like seed selection. It's a matter of stress. As again, that's where the green seam comes in. So in the hotter periods, the, the farmer may want to increase the, the time period or length of time is irrigation. So it's also to know if he, it is a rain-fed field or it is a irrigated field by a drip or whatever, but um, it sounds like it would be a rain-fed situation. So the yield significantly drops when there is no moisture. So the plants naturally are going to stop producing because they are gone into survival mode now. So for you to keep them in production mode, you have to create the or foster that natural environment, which is improve the soil moisture, irrigation, wetting, whatever it is that you do at that time to get water there and then continue feeding them. So it's just a plant natural way of shutting down when there is a lack of one of those factors that it needs to grow and produce. So green steam, yes, if I have to continue, green steam would be a product to be used at that time to help lessen that stressful period. And then, I don't know, moisture max, if you mean. <laughs> but yes, address the water situation. That's what it sounds like to me. Yes, Georgia. Hello. Oh, sorry about that, Dale. Yes. There's another question. What are the advantages and disadvantages of planting hot peppers on plastic mulch? Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Well, the advantages will be weed control, definitely. Yes, to some extent, because the, the, the reflective capacity of the, the, the material plastic mulch sometimes wards off certain pests. But um, in our region, some of the downfalls I've seen is that 
the plastic mulch often at times creates a hotter, the sky creating a microclimate under under the root at the root system, especially when, especially, and this is more so, especially when the irrigation system is not on point. Farmers who I've seen with a good irrigation system don't have the problem. But when you have plastic mulch and the, your irrigation system is not on point, problems. On point by not being on point, I mean you get your source of water is not very consistent. So yeah, yes, you have drip lines or drip tapes and you have the plastic mulch, but then you don't get water right throughout the week. Yeah, water come one time in a two weeks. Then we see a problem where plastic mulch is that definitely no no. So again, if used correctly in a comprehensive system, is it a is a win win for me? But when we we see farmers trying to implement it and the system is not foolproof, then we can see problem. We also have seen farmers that put on plastic mulch and then try to apply granular fertilizer through the the mulch. Problems again. You get me? Uh, that system kind of go hand in hand with a fertigation with a drip system. So, as I mentioned, if not used correctly in its entirety, we can see those kind of problems popping up with plastic mulch. But as I said, when used correctly, it's a win-win situation. Another question. Can agassi be used and when should it be used? Yeah, the, the agassi definitely can be used. Um, the agassi are it's actually a product that can be used right through. Now. It can be used from the transplanting stage right through as well to help with that development. And also because of what I mentioned before, with paper being repeat, repetitive in terms of production, that continued production. And in older fields, or in older fields where you see that might need resuscitation. So you've taken the, you've taken the gamble and said, okay, the paper fields, I still have something left in them. So they, 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 they just need to be resuscitated. I guess you can play an important role in that as well. Um, one yeah. last question, not sure if it's the last, but how effective is Fortify in hot pepper care? Oh, Fortify is very, very good. Um, it being it being that sure shot of phosph phosphate and phosphite, you get the added benefit of root development and disease protection. So a healthier plant is able to ward off disease that much more, and the phosphites in the fortify do exactly that by blocking certain pathogens from entering the plant. And then the first one to know is that quick root development, but the fortify is actually a product used in a program. So if we use fortify, we in at Alchemy in our program use fortify in conjunction with Bio20. So we'll be using that. If we're to use fortify in that program, we'll be using it with Bio20 in that initiation stage. And then we'll continue with fortify along with Calmax B when the plant has started to flow and produce. So Fortify has its position from the initiation stage all the way up to production. So to answer your question, it's very effective when used in the right program. Okay. And for those persons who would like our crop care guide, you can send us an email. That's a hot pepper crop care guide. It's info.jam at caribchem.com. That's I-N-F-O dot J-A-M at C-A-R-I-B-C-H-E-M dot com. I'll put it in the chat also. Um, one more question. Does the yes, plant yeah. limit the amount of peppers it can hold? What are in here? Does the plant limit the amount of peppers it can hold? Oh, that, oh definitely, definitely. Definitely the plant does that, but that limitation is based on your crop management. For example, 
if you were neglecting or if you were not on point with your nutrient delivery or your crop management all the way up to production, there's no way you can expect that plant now to be able to produce as many peppers as someone who was on point. So definitely, yes, the plant limits the amount of peppers it can hold. But that limitation somehow, that limitation has a lot to do with the management of the pepper field, of the pepper plant. And that is why I have, I have throughout the presentation, I have I had stress being specific, target specific, a target specific program and by steering. So we are steering the crop towards producing a, 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 to a high yield. And if you notice the pepper plants that I showed you in the in this slide, they were have those plants had on multiple fruits, mature fruits, developing fruits, smaller fruits, flowers, and buds. So the, that, that part, those particular plants would be very high yielding compared to one that had only some fruits, but no developing fruits or flowers. Because I've seen that a lot. Pepper plants with just fruits, but no flowers. And what is that saying to you, the farmer? Once you've picked, once you've reaped, then you're going to hit a wall. You're going to have to start now to start trying to get the plant to produce flowers, trying to get the plant to produce fruits. So we don't want that. So that's why at any one point in time, I mentioned the trees need to have fruits, three different sizes, flowers and buds. You can continue that. You're in it, doing it. And Lennox is asking, is pulling off hot peppers really advantageous? Is what? Pulling. Is pruning of hot peppers pruning, pruning? Pruning, 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 pruning. Is it pruning. advantageous? Yeah. I would say, dependent on the situation in the field, pruning, in a sense, if it's going to if it is going to be used as a regular culture practice, no. Pruning, in a sense, if there was a damage to the, the, the field or for example, there are some strong winds, they had some broken off branches. Pruning definitely can help the plant to sprout back. If you had a kind of nutrient stagnation in some point in time, especially when it comes to resuscitation of an old field, pruning off those old dry twigs and adding on nutrients can help new sprouts to come up so yes, pruning, depending on how it is used, definitely. Resuscitation of all fields, putting out twigs, yes. As a standard practice in a pepper field, you mean you have healthy leaves and, lot, and, and branches and you're cutting off to say, no, I can't see where that would be advantageous. It would, it, would, it would raise other questions if that's what you were doing it for. It would raise your planting distance the Mika, if you have a situation where that you're getting an overcrowding and you need to prune leaves, it raises concerns about your planting distance. It raises concern about your overall layout of the field in terms of what was your, your long-term plan. Am I going to have want these pepper field trees to be at this stage for what time? And if you plant them close, then you know high density, they are going for a shorter period. And those are one of the, the, the factors that come with high density that closing up. So it is all dependent on what your goals were going into the production. I hope that answers it. Okay. I'd like that person to let me know if that answers it. Well, there's no response. Okay. But I want to thank you, Dale, for this afternoon. And I want to thank our farmers and persons who have joined us for this afternoon. Our next session will be a Facebook, Instagram, YouTube Live. And this will be Sweet Corn Production on next week, Friday, that is June 18th.
3.30 p.m. So we are asking you to join us for that. Um, one last question in the chat. All right, so somebody, Carla is asking, what's the estimated yield of an acre of hot peppers that we will do a cost benefit analysis and we post on our Instagram and Facebook page. Mr. Smith is asking what products can be used to help you strengthen the branches to prevent breakage. Why do that? Okay, go ahead. Breakage, breakage from what? Breakage from load from the fruit or and what hold all the papers? I mean, you can break it. It's really kind of relevant because if it's a physical thing, I mean, strong wind that, that can be prevented. And a lot of times when you have a lot of breakage, it's generally seen in the older plants. Older plants are plants that that were heavy laden with fruit. Again, that's a physical, that's a weight thing. There's no way to prevent that unless you're going to prop, prop the, the branches that are heavily loaded. But I mean, a plant that is healthy from the initiation stage, from transplant continuing up, generally does not display those characteristics. It would be easy to break because those branches would be supple enough to withstand the load of fruit bearing. So the breaking signifies a shortage in his crop management from that initiation stage coming up. And that is why I, I, I kept on stressing to keep the nutrient reserve high. So the person said, um, speaking of breakage, I experienced a lot of that because my trees are loaded. Right, right. So that's why I mentioned the, the, re, the, the, the factors on which breaking can occur. That breaking that he mentioned that uh, that uh, alluded to before, the tree is under the load from the weight of the papers. The most you can do is prop, try to prop the branches. And in a lot of cases, that's not possible. So you won't even start the breaking. Once, once it breaks now, you can cut. This is where the pruning that I mentioned. If you're pruning to research data pruning, this is where that pruning will be vital now to make that cut, to prevent that breakage point for any bacteria and things go through, so make that cut. Okay, thank you again, Dale, and we'll stop here for this afternoon. Thank you all for joining us. Um, you can join us tomorrow on 4106 at 618, where we will have another session with Kim. Have a, right, thank, thank you, Joe. Thanks, day. everyone, for listening. Thank you. Our program was very, very interesting. Thanks again, yeah. Yeah, man, thanks a lot.